Schaefer. I just moved here last weekend from San Francisco, so I have very little to say about local politics. I did have the opportunity to participate in Occupy Wall Street in mid-September, and I just wanted to share with you my impressions from that experience. And I also wanted to remind you that anyone can get up here and play leader for a day. I have absolutely no political affiliation, zero experience leading a movement, but I have been an activist my whole life because I want a better life for myself and for all of you because I know deep, deep in my heart that we're all connected and that even the people running the system are us and I am them and they are me. I was in New York in mid to late September and um, very much like here, a lot of us just showed up because we felt compelled. We didn't really have a clear agenda and the media criticized us a whole lot because we didn't. The reality is that the problems we're facing as a global community are way too complex to be boiled down to bullet points and to be solved <coughs> by individuals, especially individuals that did not feel participated in creating the problem. The solution is absolutely local and global simultaneously. The movement today is happening in cities all over the planet. The honest truth is that we have absolutely no idea where we're going, but we know what we need to move away from. And that is enough for today. <laughs> there are absolutely no experts because we've never been at this point in history before. We are screwed in a way that is historically unprecedented. <laughs> and the solution will emerge from us because everyone in this square and throughout the globe has skill, has heart, has passion, most importantly has faith in a future and that's all we need. We'll open up, share those things and sort it out. Do not be intimidated because you cannot clearly articulate the perfect unique solution. There are many solutions as there are problems. That would be infinite numbers of solutions to an infinite numbers of problems that we're facing around race relations, around economic justice, around our health and our environment, about the visibility of women, about all minorities being oppressed around the globe. And it's not easy to explain because all forms of oppression are very, very tightly intertwined. Pick one thread that's sticking out and poking you in the eye and pull at it until you completely unweave that pattern and have a gigantic pile of thread on the floor to start knitting again. Thank you so much for showing up today. Hang in there. We're on the right track. Blessed be. Day, like many of us, or all of us, I'd imagine, to show solidarity with the protesters in New York City that have inspired the hundreds of thousands to take to the streets in their, in their own capital cities and occupy those public spaces. Woo! I'm also here to use this time and space to express my own dissent as a worker, as a unionist, an anarchist, a critical thinker, but most of all as a human being. While the situation here in Australia may not be the same as the one in the US, we sure as hell have our fair share of problems. People must remember that this particular movement is not one that is represented by any party or leader, nor is it one that wishes to be co-opted by any party or leader. Who would no doubt at least sell us out in the name of their own upward mobility. There are many people in this movement, and I'm one of them, who are sick of politicians letting them down time and time again. Some of us, unfortunately, have put our trust in those who allegedly represent us in the past and have then been neglected and left by the wayside. There are some of us who once believed that looking to the House of the Parliament would change things for the better. There are even some of us who have been unfortunate enough to have fallen for the delusion that there is any form of fair and balanced media in this country that provides quality, logical, 
quarter. He left his diaries for us all to look at once he died. And he used to write things like, in order for a gentleman to hold his run, his sheep run in this district, it is necessary to slaughter the natives left and right. That's the sort of money that built the Melbourne Club. And that's the sort of money that has kept flowing into the Melbourne Club for the last 150 years. Once we've created people at the Melbourne Club, maybe we could walk another 50 metres, we'd be outside of one of the world headquarters of Rio Tinto. One of the biggest, ugliest mining companies on the face of the planet. And while we're there, we could send a shout out to 9,000 striking mine workers just to our north in, uh, in West Papua who walked out of the Grasberg Gold and Copper Mine demanding that their $1.50 an hour be raised to $12.50 or $30, $31.50 in parity with, the, with the work, what the workers get in a Rio Tinto mine in Australia, in the US and elsewhere around the world. For walking out for equal pay, they, recent, they just this week had one of their miners shot at and killed by the Indonesian military. So while we're on Collins Street, we can stand outside Rio Tinto who count the profits from that sort of slaughter. Moving down the hill. Moving down the hill we get to uh, the lovely statue of Burke and Wills here on my right. Now Burke, bastard son of one of the landed aristocrats, a sort of, uh, you know, great man that settled this country, invaded <laughs> this country, famously died in the desert. He is one of the very few white victims of racism in this country. He was a victim of his own racism. As he lay there heroically dying in the desert in 1860, his biography records that Aboriginal people came up to him and tried to offer him fishes and water and berries and stuff to eat. His response to these blacks coming up and trying to help him out was to shoot at them. And as a result, Burke here died in the desert. So it's a great monument to the sort of the sort of genocide that has gone on and continues in this country to this day, again on Collins Street. Skipping right along, we can get down to the Stock Exchange, another scene of the crime, further down Collins Street. Now, all of that parade, it's a parade of ruling class power. And we know how powerful they are. We know the power that they have to stuff our world up. But we also know, because we're here today, and because we've seen Wall Street, and we've seen everything else, that they are not all powerful. On May Day, on the 1st of May 2001, thousands of activists, thousands of trade unionists shut the Australian Stock Exchange in Collins Street down for a day. Woo! Now that, that was part of maybe the last global wave of resistance, that global justice movement that, start, that was sparked in Seattle, that moved to Cachabamba, that found a residence down at Crane Casino in 2000 and, and beyond. Now, We've got this other wave going. It's a wave that started in Tunisia late last year. It's a wave that toppled the dictator in Tunisia. It's a wave that toppled the dictator in Egypt. It's a wave that is still battering the dictatorships throughout the Middle East. It's a wave that has spread to squares, workplaces, um, you know, factories, uh, government departments all over Greece and Spain, all over Britain even. And now it's a wave that we've seen has spread to Wall Street. And from there, throughout the world, here to Collins Street. We don't know how far that wave can go. We don't know even what's going to happen for the next few days. I hope that we'll be hanging out, listening to each other, talking to each other, going for marches, coming back, hanging out some more, and having basically a festival of resistance, you know, for as long as we can hold out. We don't know how far that wave can go. But as Robbie said, well, I guess we never know how powerful we are until we stand up. And that's the fantastic thing about today, that we've stood up, and as Robbie said, it's when we stand up that they